this throne appears as old as the building itself. It looks unused, more a piece of artwork than a ruler's seat. Done. This is Montague. Let's talk to him. This handsome young man seems lost in thought, his brow furrowed and slightly frowning upon his lips. And to thee, Sir Hale, what dost thou wish of me? Yes? Hmm. What do you know of Ravel Puzzlebow? Hmm, legendary night hag, no? Thou shouldst speak to Quell, sir. He is most knowledgeable regarding such things. He's within the fest hall. The where, I don't know. Uh, who are you? I am named Montague, Factorum of the Sensates. Factotum. Factotum? Verily, sir, a member if thou like. Uh, but there's sensates. What are you doing here? I work as an assistant for one of the faction's administrators. Though more often now than the past, I find myself perplexed by one of life's strange ways. Such as? Problems with feminine variety. You're <laughs> That's funny. What's the problem, exactly? I don't know what's bothering her. I've tried to cheer her up. I don't know what could be the matter. Uh, didn't really explain who, who was talking about. How are things between you two? Other than this bout of discontent and humdrums, everything is splendid. All that orbits around us does so with tranquility. Her families are more than satisfied with our potential union, and her siblings love me. There is nothing wrong. Uh, perhaps that's the problem. No problems. It's too quiet for her. How dost thou mean that no problems are problems? Tis my desire that thou speak plainly. Perhaps she wants a little more spice in your relationship. <laughs> How wouldst thou know what she wishes? He becomes heated. We love and we love unconditionally with none of the sordid or poisonous wrappings that seem to unfold all in young love. I call thee out, sir, and I call thee a, re a recreant knave and a fool. Uh, that's enough of your insults. Uh, calm down, man. <laughs> I am sorry. It was the fury of the moment that ca caused me to speak so. I tender my apologies to thee and thine, good sir. Think nothing of it. It's no matter. Thou art indeed gracious, sir. Well, I guess there's no helping. <laughs> Not very helpful. All Maybe right. with higher wisdom you could... Is that guy making that noise? Mertwin the Headless. I thought that that was the noise of me kicking my limb limb. <laughs> Maybe it didn't run off. Maybe it just went, like, behind the door. Anyway. It's clear there's something very wrong with this man. The way he lurches about, bumping into things, staring off blankly into space. As you approach him, you at last realize his plight. He's headless. The thing on his shoulders is merely... Oh, excuse me, a skillfully, skillfully carved wooden prosthetic. A false head. The headless body stops fumbling and for a moment and pauses. Its hands begin to reach out as if trying to feel exactly where you are. Uh grab his hand, let him touch him. After a moment, its finger brushes your forearm, it clutches your your arm and follows it up to the shoulder, and then your head. As it feels your face and head, its hands brush your neck as if it were checking for something. Finally, it grabs your hand and shakes it vigorously in greeting. You notice that its skin is cold and slightly clammy. Can you understand me? The figure makes a series of hand motions, then waits for a response. It seems like he's asking a question. Don't know sign language, buddy. The headless body taps its foot for a moment, scratching at the chin of its prosthetic head. Suddenly it raises a finger as if struck by an idea. It points at you, then at the eyes of its wooden head, then at you again. It then indicates its wooden head with both hands, shrugs, and points at you. Uh, nope, haven't seen your head. 
Headless body shrugs, slumps a bit, turns to amble off. Well, guess we can look out for a head then. All right. Joel me. What's in here? Done. More sensates. Talking to Gisus the Crooked. All right. If I can interrupt. The squat hunched old man still has the broad shoulders and scarred calloused hands of a worker or warrior. An aura of weary despair seems to hang him up about him. He appears to be giving a lecture, a lecture at the moment. Uh, stay for the lecture. Right, now listen up. This is the seminar on the war. If you're to listen about the blood war, take root. If you're not, you're in the wrong and, wrong all and you'd best dump your soft, comfort-loving sigillian limber stems out of here. Man, he has a weird uh, dialect. Or idiolect, maybe. The blood war. More boring than listening to a governor recite laws. Let's find some young sensates who need to be indoctrinated in the ways of passion. He waggles his eyebrows in <laughs> anticipation. Oh, this is Mort piping in here. Uh, no, Mort. I want to hear this, Mort. Shut up. The man suddenly throws a dark eye over the audience as if looking for something. And further, if you're Tanari or Batezu, ump your scaly eyes out the door. It's not letting your or ornery bastards bend an ear in this to this and listen to your barmy arguments. <laughs> Keep listening. Cause this is no discussion on who's right. Behind you, you hear the sounds of something large leaving the lecture hall. <laughs> it just tells the blood war from the human point of view. It's eyes not promoting on one side or another because they both stink in different ways. So the blood war must be a war of like races, Tanari and Tezu humans. The speaker becomes somber, so Wes left a year wanting to listen to some blood war stories, tales about the war, or er, ear to ear the order of it all. <laughs> the order. <laughs> I cannot even speak this way. The floating fortress is woven weaved oh human skin. <laughs> Plains wide battlegrounds the blood war be fought on. He bears his yellowed teeth, tales of friends locking fangs with other fiends. Gar snar he snar his snarl fades and he looks suddenly bored. <laughs> well, let me peel back your lids and crack your bone boxes. Tis all this steam and epo me nonsense to be dwelling on that forge dome. He spits in derision, rolling his eyes wildly. I'll tell you this, though, you can't imagine this, the scale the blood war was fought on. Nothing you've seen, erred, or participated in, nothing compares. Time, numbers of allegiance, sheer bloodshed, nothing compares. Burks, to try and imagine it, forget it. My advice, simple, stay away from the big bloody mess altogether. The only thing he needs to know in th is this. Fiends are killing fiends. Batezu are slaughtering Tanari. Tanari are butchering Batezu right now. He spits again. Neither's winning. Don't think either can win. Biggest stalemate this side of eternity. Thank the powers. So mate, this is a war just between Tanari and Batezu. Which is strange because why wouldn't he want either side to listen? I mean, <laughs> see, not one argument to break out, I guess. That's it, he shrugs. That's it. I'll be answering any questions you got for me now. <laughs> well, that wasn't very informative. What's your question, Cutter? Uh, what started the blood war? You got a right to be curious about what started this big ol' sodden soupy mess in the first place. What set the fiends to lock and horns in the first place? Bitten and clawing at each other until there was only reason they were alive. Simple, they met. He <laughs> sighs. Tanari and Batezu crossed each other one one day, and 
Like two drunken bigots, they set to fight, and <laughs> that simple. He frowns. Well, now, pike that. I imagine two drunken priests who believe each knows the only way to live. And they'll make those priests ripped with scales and fangs and horns and a cruel stake seven leagues wide and put them in an itty-bitty sodden cell and you have a good idea of the love that can spring forth. And there you have it, the origin of the blood war. Why are two evil races fighting? That's an odd question. Um we'll ask it anyway. One believes evil should be nice and orderly. One believes evil should be chaos. Running rampart across the plains. <laughs> Both evil, but doesn't mean they can't agree on anything. Bad blood, bad blood. Each wants to exterminate the other, so only their brand of evil remains. <laughs> they hate each other. 